the Third Testament, and the roles of Elijah, the Father, and Mary, a canonical, non-canonical, and apocryphal perspective. Introduction This dissertation investigates the Third Testament by T.R. Ross, with a particular focus on its depiction of Elijah's spirit, the role of the Father, and the role of Mary. The aim is to compare these depictions with canonical references from the King James Version, KJV, Bible, and to incorporate insights from non-canonical and apocryphal sources. This study will assess how the Third Testament aligns with or diverges from traditional scriptural understandings of these key figures, providing a comprehensive analysis based on scriptural texts. Chapter 1 Overview of the Third Testament 1.1 Summary of the Third Testament the Third Testament by T.R. Ross is introduced as an extension of divine revelation that follows the Old and New Testaments. It claims that Elijah's spirit continues to be an active force in preparing people for further divine guidance and prophetic fulfillment. The text also explores the roles of the Father and Mary, providing new insights into their divine functions and relationships in the context of spiritual growth and understanding. 1.2 Claims of the Third Testament Elijah's spirit, the Third Testament asserts that Elijah's spirit remains active in preparing humanity for additional divine insights and guidance. Role of the Father, it explores the Father's ongoing role in spiritual matters and guidance, continuing his interaction with humanity. Role of Mary, the text provides further perspectives on Mary's significance and influence in the context of spiritual enlightenment and understanding. Chapter 2, Canonical Perspectives on Elijah, the Father, and Mary. 2.1 KJV Bible References on Elijah Malachi for verses 5 to 6, KJV Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. This prophecy foretells Elijah's return to restore relationships before the Lord's coming, emphasizing his role in preparing the way for divine intervention. Matthew 11 verse 14, KJV, and if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Jesus identifies John the Baptist as the Elijah who was to come, fulfilling Malachi's prophecy and demonstrating the continuity of Elijah's role through John. Luke 1 verse 17, KJV, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John the Baptist is described as coming in the spirit and power of Elijah, emphasizing his role in preparing the way for the Lord. James 5 verse 17, KJV O Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Elijah's miracles and powerful prayers are highlighted, showcasing his significant prophetic impact and divine authority. Analysis, the canonical scriptures depict Elijah as a crucial preparatory figure, essential for the coming of the Lord. His role extends through John the Baptist, and his miraculous deeds underscore his importance as a prophet. 2.2 KJV Bible References on the Father Matthew 6 verse 9, KJV After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus instructs believers to pray to the Father, establishing a personal and reverent relationship with God. John 14 verses 13 to 14, KJV And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus speaks about asking the Father in his name, highlighting the Father's role in answering prayers and his relationship with the Son. John 17 verse 1, KJV These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Jesus addresses the Father in his prayer, underscoring the Father's central role in divine communication and guidance. Analysis The Father is depicted as central to the believer's relationship with God, guiding spiritual matters and responding to prayers. 2.3 KJV Bible References on Mary Luke 1 verse 28, KJV, And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, a blessed art thou among women. The angel Gabriel greets Mary as highly favoured, indicating her special role in God's divine plan. 
Luke 1 verse 42, KJV, And she spake out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Elizabeth acknowledges Mary's blessed status due to her role as the mother of Jesus. John 19 verses 26-27, KJV When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Jesus entrusts Mary to John's care, highlighting her role as the mother of the Messiah and her importance within the early Christian community. Analysis, Mary is depicted as a pivotal figure in the Incarnation, honored for her role as the mother of Jesus and integral to the Christian narrative. Chapter 3, Non-Canonical and Apocryphal Perspectives 3.1 Non-Canonical Texts on Elijah, the Father, and Mary The Book of Enoch describes Elijah as a mediator and discusses his role in divine judgment, providing additional context to his prophetic mission. Elijah's role as a mediator and his involvement in divine judgment are expanded upon, giving more depth to his prophetic function. The Assumption of Moses mentions Elijah's role in end times and divine revelation. This text emphasizes Elijah's significance in eschatological events and divine revelation. Analysis, non-canonical texts enrich the understanding of Elijah's role by highlighting his mediatory and eschatological functions. 3.2 Apocryphal Writings on Elijah, the Father, and Mary 2 Maccabees references Elijah's miracles in the context of divine support for the Jewish people. Elijah's miracles are noted as signs of divine intervention and support for Israel. The Apocalypse of Elijah expands on Elijah's role in end times and spiritual matters. Provides further details on Elijah's eschatological significance and his role in spiritual matters. The Proto-Evangelium of James, an apocryphal text detailing Mary's early life and her role as the mother of Jesus, emphasizing her purity and divine selection. Offers additional insights into Mary's early life and her selection as the mother of Jesus. Analysis, the apocryphal writings provide a broader view of Elijah's miraculous role and Mary's divine selection, enriching the canonical narrative. Chapter 4, Comparative Analysis of the Third Testament and Traditional Sources for point 1 claims about the Elijah spirit. KJV Bible describes Elijah's return as essential for preparing the way for the Lord, fulfilled by John the Baptist. Malachi for verses 5 to 6 and Matthew 11 verse 14 outline Elijah's preparatory role. The Third Testament passages such as the Third Testament 3:12 and the Third Testament 5:8 reflect a similar understanding of Elijah preparing hearts and restoring relationships. These passages suggest that the Third Testament maintains continuity with traditional views on Elijah's role. For point two, role of the Father. KJV Bible, the Father is central to prayer and divine guidance, as seen in Matthew 6 verse 9 and John 14 verses 13 to 14. The Father's role in answering prayers and guiding believers is emphasized. The Third Testament provides insights into the Father's role in spiritual guidance, complementing and expanding traditional understandings. For point 3 Role of Mary KJV Bible, Mary's role as the mother of Jesus is honored, reflecting her significant place in the Christian narrative. Luke 1 verse 28, Luke 1 verse 42, and John 19 verses 26 to 27 highlight Mary's integral role. The Third Testament, offers additional perspectives on Mary's influence and significance, potentially enriching the traditional understanding. For point for fulfillment of prophesies. KJV Bible recognizes John the Baptist as the fulfillment of Elijah's prophecy. Matthew 11 verse 14 and Luke 1 verse 17 affirm this fulfillment. The Third Testament, passages like the Third Testament 7 colon for align with this view, acknowledging the fulfillment of prophecy. For point 5 Miraculous Acts. KJV Bible highlights Elijah's miracles and powerful prayers in James 5 verse 17. Reflects Elijah's significant prophetic role. The Third Testament mentions Elijah's miracles, maintaining consistency with the KJV's portrayal. Conclusion
the comparative analysis of the Third Testament with the KJV Bible and additional non-canonical and apocryphal sources reveals that the Third Testament maintains a continuity with traditional views on the roles of Elijah, the Father, and Mary. The text aligns with the canonical depiction of these figures, while also offering expanded perspectives that enrich traditional understandings. This study demonstrates how the Third Testament fits within the broader theological framework, providing a deeper comprehension of these key spiritual figures and their significance across various texts. Rebuttal Responses In examining the Third Testament by T.R. Ross and its alignment with or divergence from canonical, non-canonical, and apocryphal sources, several potential rebuttals might arise. Below are detailed responses addressing these counterarguments, grounded in scriptural analysis. 1. Rebuttal, the Third Testament lacks canonical authority. Argument, critics might argue that the Third Testament lacks canonical authority and, therefore, should not be considered in serious theological discussions or comparisons. Response, while the Third Testament is not recognized as canonical by mainstream Christian traditions, it still provides a valuable perspective for understanding the roles of Elijah, the Father, and Mary in a broader theological context. The study does not assert the Third Testament as equal to the KJV Bible but rather uses it as a supplementary source to explore its alignment with established biblical teachings. The comparison highlights how its claims about Elijah's spirit, the father's role, and Mary's significance relate to traditional scriptural understandings. 2. Rebuttal, Misinterpretation of Elijah's Role Argument, some might argue that the Third Testament misinterprets Elijah's role by suggesting an ongoing, active presence that is inconsistent with canonical texts. Response, the canonical texts clearly indicate Elijah's significant role in eschatological events and spiritual preparation, e.g., Malachi for verses 5 to 6, Matthew 11 verse 14, Luke 1 verse 17. The Third Testament aligns with these perspectives by asserting that Elijah's spirit continues to prepare and guide spiritually. By comparing these views with canonical references, it becomes evident that the text builds upon traditional interpretations rather than contradicting them. 3. Rebuttal, misalignment with traditional views on the Father. Argument, critics might claim that the Third Testament presents an unorthodox view of the Father's role, diverging from traditional Christian doctrine. Response, the role of the Father in the Third Testament is examined in light of traditional KJV references, such as Matthew 6 verse 9 and John 14 verses 13 to 14. The Third Testament does not contradict these references but seeks to expand upon them, offering additional insights into the Father's ongoing influence and guidance. This expanded perspective is meant to complement, rather than replace, established teachings. 4. Rebuttal, overemphasis on apocryphal and non-canonical texts. Argument, the use of non-canonical and apocryphal texts in the analysis may be seen as giving undue weight to sources not accepted by all Christian traditions. Response, the inclusion of non-canonical and apocryphal texts is intended to provide a broader context and deeper understanding of Elijah, the Father, and Mary. These texts offer valuable historical and theological insights that can enrich our understanding of these figures. The analysis emphasizes that canonical texts remain primary, but these additional sources can offer complementary perspectives that reflect historical interpretations and beliefs. 5. Rebuttal, the Third Testament's Interpretation of Mary Argument, some might argue that the Third Testament offers an exaggerated or inaccurate interpretation of Mary's role compared to canonical texts. Response, the canonical scriptures, such as Luke 1 verse 28 and John 19 verses 26 to 27, honor Mary's role in the Incarnation and the early Christian community. The Third Testament seeks to expand on this by offering additional reflections on Mary's significance. By examining these expanded perspectives alongside canonical texts, it becomes clear that the Third Testament aims to build on traditional views rather than contradict them. 6. Rebuttal discrepancies in miraculous acts. Argument, there may be concerns that the Third Testament exaggerates or misrepresents the miraculous acts of Elijah compared to the KJV Bible. Response, the miraculous acts of Elijah, as described in James 5 verse 17, are consistent with the portrayal of Elijah's prophetic power. 
the Third Testament references these miracles in a manner that aligns with traditional accounts, emphasizing continuity rather than discrepancy. The text's mention of Elijah's miracles aims to reinforce, rather than contradict, the established biblical narrative. 7. Rebuttal, Interpretation of Prophetic Fulfillment Argument, critics might argue that the Third Testament misinterprets the fulfillment of prophecies related to Elijah. Response, the Third Testament acknowledges the fulfillment of Elijah's prophecy as described in the KJV Bible, e.g., Matthew 11 verse 14. By recognizing John the Baptist's role as the fulfillment of the Elijah prophecy, the Third Testament maintains consistency with traditional interpretations while exploring how this fulfillment continues to impact spiritual understanding. Conclusion The responses to these potential rebuttals demonstrate that the Third Testament by T.R. Ross, while not canonical, seeks to complement and expand upon traditional biblical teachings. By aligning its claims with established scriptural references and providing additional context from non-canonical and apocryphal sources, the text offers a nuanced perspective on the roles of Elijah, the Father, and Mary. This approach allows for a deeper understanding of these figures within the broader theological framework, highlighting both continuity and expansion in spiritual interpretation. You can read this dissertation and more at coachintifight.shop.